Dr. Newman, would you briefly describe your educational background? Well, my formal training uh, is a Bachelor of Science in Physics from Duke University and a PhD in Theoretical Astrophysics from Cornell University, a uh, Master of Divinity from Faith Theological Seminary outside Philadelphia, and a Master of Sacred Theology in Old Testament from uh, Biblical Theological Seminary, and some further graduate work at the uh, University of Pennsylvania in Religious Thought and uh, in Westminster Seminary in uh, Hermeneutics and Biblical Interpretation. Do you agree with those who claim that intelligent design has no place in science? Let's start first with the uh, latter part, that it's not within the realm of science. If one defines science as an attempt to explain reality without recourse to the supernatural and therefore preferring any other explanation first before getting there, then it's probably correct that uh, this is not in the realm of science by definition, okay? But if one defines science as an attempt to understand how things really are, then we do not know whether that's the case until we've looked at the evidence. Now, there's some fairly substantial evidence, I believe, that uh, the universe is designed, and the natural reading of that would be there's a designer behind it. Do any branches of science use an inference to intelligent design? In the statement we were looking at there about uh, uh, <clears throat> no way to scientifically investigate the question of a designer, uh, two sciences I can think of uh, know how to look for intelligences. And those two sciences would be archaeology and uh, uh, what we might call a branch of astronomy called SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. In archaeology, a archaeologist or an anthropologist may pick up a chipped stone from the ground and ask himself, how did this stone come to be chipped? Was this stone chipped because it fell from that cliff up there and bounced off a few rocks on the way down? or it was lying in a stream and uh, uh, water freezing and thawing perhaps uh, uh, in the winter has chipped off some stones? Or was it carefully chipped by a workman who was working on it? Well, if there's only three chips off the thing, you probably can't tell. But if there are 100 chips off the uh, thing, and those 100 chips are aligned in such a way that they make a pretty good arrowhead or spear point, I think you can feel quite confident that you are looking at evidence of an intelligence behind it. The placement of 100 chips on the surface of a axe head or spear point or arrowhead is a good indicator that that is not merely something that happens to look like an axe head, spear point, or such, but that it really is such a thing. Well, how much information are the placement, uh, is the placement of 100 chips? Well, it's 100 triplets uh, of uh, locating that in three dimensions, so let's say relative to the center of gravity of that particular uh, piece of rock, if you like. So it's about 300 pieces of information, or if you think of uh, a couple decimal places, you could run it up a little further, but it's like that, all right? How would a uh, person searching for extraterrestrial intelligence tell whether signals coming in uh, from outer space uh, through a radio telescope antenna, whether they are little green men or whether they are pulsars rotating very rapidly. That was a question that uh, uh, arose to Jocelyn Bell and uh, Stanley Hewish uh, when they were uh, uh, first looking at the uh, pulsars when they were discovered. And the answer, I think, would be you would, ex you would examine the, uh, the signal and the placement of perhaps 100 or 200 or 300 signals would tell you whether it might just be some kind of rotation phenomena or whether it looks like what we might call the uh, the organized complexity that is more characteristic of a language. Uh, uh, Carl Sagan in his uh, science fiction novel Contact investigates this particular question again. It would seem then that perhaps a hundred or two hundred or a thousand pieces of information, uh, digits of information, bytes of information, would be enough to tell whether you're looking at something random or whether you're looking at something that is, uh, is real, if, uh, intelligent if you like, or uh, an intelligent designer lies behind it. Interestingly, uh, the most complicated thing we know of in our universe is life. And the information content of even a simple uh, E. coli bacteria, you know, it's, uh, it's a prokaryotic cell, not a complicated one, etc. cetera. Uh, Sagan says in his article, Life in Encyclopedia Britannica, the information content is equivalent to 10 to the 12th power bits, or about 100 million pages in the Encyclopedia Britannica. And it's not just random stuff. It's making a working machine. That sounds to me like we are getting a message from E. coli that it was designed. 
and that a person who claims that anything else is happening is under a certain obligation to show how such a thing could have designed itself. And not just by waving hands, but at least by some kind of computer simulation that you can get from the kind of information content in simple molecules up to the kind of information content of 100 million pages in Encyclopedia Britannica by random processes, even though constrained by natural laws.